Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. You could be next. Oh my god. I don't even know what this is about. Sometimes I wonder why they keep the convenience store open that long. Are you speaking or... No. Okay. I have to read. Just like last night and the night before, barely any customers came. Whatever. As long as I get paid. Okay. I was wondering, where the fuck are we? <laughs> Looks like it started raining right when I got home. Guess I was lucky. Ah, okay. Can't open the window and let the fresh air in without getting my laptop wet, though. <sighs> Alright, how should I kill time tonight? The big disadvantage of being awake when everyone else was asleep was that I had no one to chat with after getting home. Sometimes I'd pay random... I pay. Yeah, I pay. Sometimes I'd play random games I'd find on the internet or watch some movie. Unproductive stuff. My life. <laughs> Which is probably a bad habit, considering I still haven't figured out what direction to take my life in. Oh my god, this speaks to me so much. Let me put on some music first. This is the perfect soundtrack for a chill, rainy night. Is the lo-fi <laughs> girl? Hmm? An email. I barely ever get any emails. The store manager usually contacts me via SMS and my friends via full chat. I get so many emails. <laughs> huh? It's an email by Blaze Marktree. I hadn't heard that name in forever. Blaze is an old classmate of mine. He was the smartest in our grade. No, probably the whole school. The music is pretty loud, at least on my ears. I'll keep it like that for a short time. Yeah. Mmm, music's good. <laughs> He also generally kept people's, uh, people at arm's length. I barely knew anything about him because of that. Why was he sending me an email? Whew. Dear Amy Waterfield, my name is Blaze Marktree. You might remember me from our shared time at school. Recently a couple of past classmates and I decided that it would be a great idea to catch up with everyone. This might serve as a great opportunity to reforge connections and to learn more about the paths everyone has taken. Ideally, this could result in an in-person reunion in the future. I have linked an invitation to a group chat that we created and invited all classmates below. Note that you will need to install a free piece of chat software called Full Chat to participate. Don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Yours sincerely, Blaze Marktree. This mail was oddly formal for an invitation to a class reunion chat. The way Blaze had worked, had worded it made it seem more like a business opportunity, right? <laughs> I was like thinking, that's so odd to write it like that. Either way, this sounded like a great idea. The only person I had kept in touch with since leaving school was my best friend Liv. Generally, I did enjoy my time at school and most people in my class are pretty cool. Eh, yeah. I'd also love to know what they're currently doing. Maybe they could give me some ideas for my future. Alright, it's settled. Time to join the group chat. Not that anyone would be online at this time of night. Hmm? Seems like three other people aside from me have joined the chat so far. Blaze, someone called Gigi Hart and someone called Mate. Oh, Mike. Oh, Blaze is writing something. Seems like he's still awake after all. Hello, Amy. It's nice to see you here. You are one of the first to join this group chat aside from us three who came up with the idea for this class reunion project. The purpose of this group chat is to catch up with our classmates, uh, past classmates, and to reforge connections. Let us know if you have any questions or concerns. Okay. You're the only one I know who writes such long paragraphs in full chat. And wasn't all of that information already in your email? <laughs> it never hurts to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Also, I would recommend spelling it email as it, <laughs> as it is a compound made up of, of the words electronic and mail. You don't write e-business or e-learning either, do you? Well, anyway, <laughs> it's nice to meet you again, Amy. Do I actually have to type that out? Oh shit, nice to meet you as well oh god i'm serious <laughs> do i have to actually no okay i have to admit <laughs> you can have you can write it out but like no i have to admit that i'm not fully sure whose name belongs to who though 
I told you using your full name as your chat name, or at least your first name, just like Amy would make things a lot easier. But Gigi sounds way cuter. Anyway, I'm Angie. We hung out one time, if you still remember. Yeah, that one time, I totally do. Now that you mentioned it, we did hang out once. We weren't particularly close though. Angie was someone who got along with everyone in our class and who was always surrounded by a bunch of other girls. It was the same when we went shopping. She invited me directly and I wasn't sure how to decline. I initially assumed we would go with a few people, but we ended up going as a group of 15. Jesus Christ, it's a nightmare. Hanging out with so many people at once was a bit much. I didn't dislike Angie though. I think I genuinely enjoy hanging out with her one on, on one. And you might know Mike as Mike. Don't mind his frequent uh, typographical errors. You'll have to get used to them. Hello. <laughs> He's a bit shy. But he'll open up to you in no time. Oh, Mike is me. Come on, I'm not. Hi, Mike. I'm not sure, but I don't think we interacted much during our time at school, did we? I don't think so. Mike didn't have to, too big of a presence, so I'm not surprised that you're in a room. Little man. Only because he was shy though, he was really good at sports. If he had been less timid, he would have likely been very popular. Arr. You, you three seem close. Were your friends back in school? I didn't remember seeing them hanging out together. Kind of. It was Angie's fault. Don't make it sound like a bad thing. I noticed that Blaze and Mike always hung out alone, so I befriended them. We ended up hanging out frequently and our friendship lasted beyond school. I wasn't good at making friends. I probably would have been fine alone, but it was still nice to have people I could share my thoughts with. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. It was, by the way, also Angie's idea to create this group reunion chat. Mike and I ended up being dragged into it. Angie tends to be pretty disorganized, so I figured they'd need me to handle the administrative side. And I guess reforging contacts, just in case they come in handy later, isn't a bad idea either. I joined because I was hoping that I could get to know my classmates properly, since I missed out on that when I was still at school. In school. I noticed that you became more outgoing recently, Mike. I think that's great. So, what have you all been up to after leaving school? I'll start. This might come as a bit of a surprise, but I've been working in software development. This was a surprise indeed. Angel was very open about herself to anyone who would listen, but I had never heard of her being into tech. I personally think that there was no reason to keep your love for programming a secret back then, Angie. Yeah, it wasn't anything bad after all. Oh well, I just thought it would make me seem weird or something. Tee -hee. Well, my past suspicions are sometimes being confirmed, unfortunately. There are some colleagues and clients at my company that make snarky comments. They're just being poop heads. <laughs> poo poo heads. Don't mind them. Yeah, we know how skilled you are at what you do. Thank you, guys. I'm glad I was able to talk about my hobby with you too back then, at least. That was probably the reason why we got so close in the first place. Can you imagine my surprise, Amy? When Blaze came up to me out of the blue and told me that he knew that I was into programming, I totally thought he was about to blackmail me. Hmm. <laughs> Turns out he's just really smart and wanted to confirm his suspicions. It didn't take, uh, make sense to keep it a secret from Blaze and Mike after that. So I just poured my heart out about all the nerdy stuff I could talk about. I couldn't talk about with anyone else to them. Bit off topic, but that emoji you used gave me a heartburn. Is that good or bad? Yeah, it looks quite odd. Does it? I mean, it's just an emoji. I think it's cute. Anyway, you're next, Mike. You'll be surprised to hear what Mike has been up to, Amy. Actually, how about you guess first? I didn't know Mike at all, so I wasn't sure how I was supposed to guess his current job. All I knew about him was that he was into sports back in school. Something with sports? I knew you'd guess that. It's probably a bit weird jump from sports, but I work with animals. I enjoyed sports in school, but I also really liked biology. I always felt less awkward around animals than humans. So I ended up studying zoology and became a keeper. Oh damn, son. That's really cool, so you work at a zoo? Yeah, it's really fun. I actually forgot to account for that. I'd have to work with other people even when working at a zoo. Oh, <laughs> okay, and now I got it. Uh, but my coworkers are really cool, and thanks to them I became a bit more sociable. 
which is why I hope I can get to know my classmates properly now. Uh, anyway, I probably wrote too much. Your turn, Blaze. Blaze's story is probably more interesting. I see my time has come then. <laughs> oh my god. I knew early on that I wanted to study and practice law. I figured it would be an adequate challenge and prove to be a fulfilling career path. Those three are such different types of people. It's really interesting. Um, fulfilling career path. After some research, I concluded that one of the best options for me was Yale University in the United States of America. It has a fairly low acceptance rate, but I wasn't too worried. Oh Jesus, currently I'm in my last semester. Do you have any further questions? Oh my God, I wish I was like that. I wish I knew right from the get go what I wanted to do. Like I'm still stressing out about what my future holds and I'm just like, oh God, <laughs> that sounds great. What is America like? That's a good question. <laughs> well, it's hard to generalize. It's, this is a very big country. But what impressed me was the contrast between the big cities and the more rural, uh, rural, rural areas of America. I also really like spending time at the parks. They're very pleasant. Forgot to ask earlier, but have you made friends there? I'd love to get to know them. I pressed. Oh, there we go. He's not replying. That's probably a reply in and of itself. Blaze did always have trouble making friends because of how uh, unapproachable he made himself. Mm, I don't need any friends in America. I can just hang out online with you. Yeah, I mean, sure. Aw, oh, that's sweet. You know, Amy Blaze may seem very unfriendly and ped pedantic, but he's actually very nice. He always helped me with anything if I needed any help and not just with studying. Yeah, he's a bit of a tsundere. Oh god. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh god. What is it? No, I know what that is. You know, someone who seems cold or harsh but gets warm and kind as you get to know them. <laughs> that emoji. The waving emoji. The one who says it's not like I like you or anything, but Baka. I would never say that. Blaze, please say that. I would love it. Sure. <laughs> I wasn't following this conversation at all. The replies just made me more confused. It's... If you don't know and you've never seen it, you're probably really confused about hearing this kind of stuff. Anyway, what about you, Amy? What have you been doing? Dying, mostly? Nothing as interesting as you three. I'm working at a convenience store to bridge time until I'm sure what I want to do long term. No worries, I'm sure we figure it out soon enough. Yeah, it took me some thinking to find out I want to be a keeper. There's no rush. This is like some therapy for me right now. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend wasting too much time either, though. But I guess there's nothing wrong with taking your time to make sure that you choose the right career path for you. I think it's always better to take time and figuring out what you want to do instead of just blindly studying whatever. Because that feels like even more time waste is wasted and you don't have as much time to think about this because you have to actually study for well this thing you are studying right now so actually just going and maybe working for a bit is not the the worst thing to do like my parents uh are against this kind of stuff because they, they know from experience apparently like once you start working you will not go back to studying because you're working you earn money and you don't want to go back and I'm personally like I think it's true in a certain sense but I also think if I know I want to study I just don't know what I want and I know okay I'm going into this career like working at a freaking convenience store or something I know I want don't want to do this for the rest of my life I actually know I want to do something else I have different pa passion uh, different hobbies etc that I kind of want to put in then honestly I don't think it's that terrible of an idea to go and go work for a bit even if it's uh, just tutoring or you know babysitting this kind of stuff and then you have a lot of I say free time to kind of figure out what you want to do maybe even work with your hobbies and maybe you turn your hobby into a profession who knows like there's also a lot of people who have those small businesses online on Etsy and lots of people just working off on uh, online stuff so yeah there's 
nothing wrong with taking time to choose the right career path. Just make sure you're not wasting too much time. <laughs> they were a bit of an odd bunch, but they all seemed like very nice people overall. Well, Blaze still seemed a bit stuck up, but I trust Angie's and Mike's assessments of him. They knew him way longer than I did. My st that was the sound effect. My stomach is rumbling. Right, I still hadn't eaten anything since coming home. Oops. Uh, I will be AFK for a bit. I'll make myself something to eat. See you in a bit. Bye. I should get uh, something too. Be back in a bit. Should I? Okay. It's going away from, from a lot. Hello! Oh, there we go. A software developer, a zookeeper and a lawyer. They all had chosen really interesting career paths. I can't help but feel bad about my lack thereof. I have no idea about programming and it seems too tough for me anyway. So I guess that wouldn't work for me. Ah, <sighs> same. I'm allergic to animal hair, so zookeeper would likely be out of the question. I just don't want to be a zookeeper. And I'm also not smart enough to become a lawyer. Well, that just seems like a terrible career for me. I'm I'm too emotional. I couldn't do it, you know. <sighs> what am I good at? Stocking shelves? Oh, that's harsh. Like, that's really hard to... Oh, well. I'll figure it out eventually. Maybe they can give me some tips later. For now, I'll warm up some leftover risotto. <laughs> Is that how you say it in English? Risotto? That should, be imp uh, that should improve my mood. How late is it now? Well, it was 2.15, something like that. Hmm, 3 a.m. There's still some time left until Liv wakes up. I wonder how well she remembers Angie, Blaze and Mike. Now that I think about it. How come the three of them are still awake? I got a, an achievement. Risotto. <laughs> okay, maybe I should ask them when I'm back at my laptop. Here we go. Here we go. I'm back with food and renewed motivation. Hmm? Are my headphones broken? The music sounds weird. Doesn't sound weird on my end. Well, maybe a bit of static. No. Hmm. I was planning on buying new ones soon anyway. The music is still listenable. I ch it just sounds a bit, bit distorted. I'll manage. Let's see what they've been chatting about while I was gone. Oh, apparently nothing. They probably have their own group chat. Right, I wanted to ask them how come they're still awake. I'm back. Hello. Welcome back. Bubbe. Hello again. I've been wondering, how come you're all still awake? It's still re early even in here in America, so it's a uh, time zone difference in my case. I have tomorrow off and I usually like staying up late when I don't have to wake up early the next day. I also might have had too much coffee and can't sleep. I had a late shit... <laughs> okay, it really says this. I had a late shit at the zoo. Currently transitioning to being a nightkeeper. Shift. That's an embarrassing typo. This is why I tell you to double check your messages before sending them. Hung out with some of the owls, they're chill. Not a fan of the scorpions though, they're active at night and scurry around. Scorpions? It's the same for me. I also work the late shift and stay up for a few hours after getting home. I'm also a night person, I just work better in the night. It really... Like I could stand up at 6am and then just until 5 or 6pm I get nothing done. Because that's not how my brain works. It's like my body, my inner clock is like, nah, man, you're working the best at 6 to 2 a.m. in the morning. 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. The main reason why I stay up after my night shift is so that I can chat with Liv before going to sleep. Liv gets up very early, so that is usually the best time to catch up with her online. She probably got Blaze's invitation as well. I assume she'll join as well once she's awake. Hey, I have an idea. How about we each tell an embarrassing secret? That way we can get to know each other better. That sounds like a dumb idea. I agree. <laughs> I'm not sure about this. I don't think I'd be able to come up with anything interesting. 
and I also didn't feel like sharing secrets with half strangers, even if they are past classmates. Mm, I guess it's fine. Please don't cry. Alright, if Mike thinks it's okay, then I guess I'll play along. No worries, Amy. You can just pass or tell us something general about yourself. We don't know you that well, so that will totally fan. Alright then. I guess I'll just tell him something random about myself rather than an actual secret. Alright, I'll go first since I proposed it. You already know about my love for programming when I was at school, so that's not much of a like, secret anymore. Surprise, I wanted to say. Instead, I'll tell you about something else. This is probably not something unnormal, but I sometimes feel jealous of other people. I guess I don't like this about myself because I don't want to have negative thoughts about others. This especially happens when people openly share things they're passionate about. Probably because I never got to talk about my hobby openly. That's interesting. I get jealous of people too. Thanks for sharing. Don't worry, feeling jealous sometimes is normal. Uh, I agree, how you deal with these feelings is what's important. That's true, that's true. You go next place, I'm still thinking. <laughs> Alright then, I'll share with you the worst day of my life. My birth. <laughs> Dramatic pause. I got a C once in grade school. <laughs> I wish that would have be one of my worst secrets, bro. I guess coming from Blaze, this is a big confession. You'll never understand my pain. <laughs> Whatever. I'm next. Blaze and Angie already know, but I might be a surprise for you, Amy. When I was in school, I did sports and took care of what I ate. But since finishing school, I kind of abandoned sports and I'm not as careful about eating healthy. So I've gained some weight, meaning I don't look how mu uh, much how I used to. The keeper job is physically demanding, but not enough to level out my love for food. I don't think it's really a problem as long as it doesn't affect your health in a major way. Yeah, and there are definitely women out there who are into chubby but underneath muscular guys. Anyway, your turn, Amy. Those are interesting secrets. I... <laughs> Mike working at the zoo reminded me of something. It's not much of a secret, though. I'd never be able to work at the zoo because of my animal hair allergy. But on top of that, I'm also allergic to iguanas. How do you even find out something like that? <laughs> it's a long story. I'd love to hear about it when we meet in person for the reunion. Anyway, my turn again. Uh, I guess I can tell you somewhat of a follow-up to my last admission. There was one time when I felt especially jealous. It was someone I knew who was... There was a sound. Oh. Okay, it was someone I knew f who I was bleh, who was into sprinting the music sounded a bit weird right there Maybe it was just my imagination She was really passionate about it and it was the topic of most of her conversations My attempts at changing the topic were usually unsuccessful She was really good at running and definitely would have become a successful athlete It was a bit painful to listen to her speak about her hobbies openly while being reminded that I couldn't talk about my own but I feigned a smile every time we talked and tried to not let it face me. Eventually I had to find a way to vent so I wouldn't explode though. Well, I did something that I'm definitely not proud of. I ended up putting tacks into her running shoes. What the fuck, Gigi? Oh, that was unexpected. I always saw Angie as a really kind person. I never expected her to resort to that, but I guess everyone has the dark side. That's... No, that's not just the dark side. That's going Cartman side. Like, what the fuck? And it seemed like Angel was regretting it. I guess you do stupid stuff when you're younger. I mean, I guess. I assume it's my turn then. This time I'll recount something that might be more interesting to you. Can we just go back to the tags for a second? Because I don't know. I would never come up with this kind of stuff. I mean, I guess you do do... I just want to find... No, I can't. If you can press the minus button up there or something. I guess you do do very dumb things when you're young. But, like, just because you're jealous doing this, this is... um, This is a step too far. Like, physically hurting someone. Like, this person probably got hurt, right? Because they put on the shoes without looking. I mean, it's tax, so they wouldn't go in that deep, but still, Jesus Christ. Um, uh, when I was very young, I knew someone who went 
on my nerves more than anyone else. He was lazy, got bad grades, was vulgar and overall an unpleasant person. And he always followed me around trying to befriend me, no matter how much I declined. He kept passionately... Oh, so something. <laughs> Sorry. Until something happened in our school trip. We had to go hiking on a mountain and I, being not very fit, hung back. And since the boy, to my detriment, wanted to hang out with me, he hung back as well. He kept passionately talk talking my ear off about something irrelevant. I don't remember what exactly. It doesn't seem like such a bad person. Like, they just wanted to be your friend. And I get it if you're telling them, hey, man, we're just not working out with each other. I don't want to be your friend. And they're still pestering you and don't leave you alone. Like, then you need to, to like talk with him again this person or go to their friends or their family and tell them hey i don't want to hang out with this person or talk to someone but whatever he's gonna say i'm very interested what he's gonna do because what this dude just did right there doesn't seem that mean spirit it seems very nice he was like oh i'm actually waiting for you like that's a nice thing to do <laughs> apparently oh what <laughs> it just skips over um, well, he distracted himself so much that he slipped and toppled over the edge. He managed to gra grab a root that was p protruding out of the cliffside. Apparently, due to shock, he was able to cry out for help. All he could do was gasp in desperation. The teacher and the other kids ahead of us hadn't heard what had happened and kept walking on. There were several things I could have done at the moment. I could have grabbed his hand or I could have cried out to the teacher. But I didn't do anything. All I can think of at the moment was how little would be lost if the boy were to disappear. Um, where is this going? What? And so I continued walking, pretending that I didn't notice. What? The boy was found dead at the... F what the fuck? At the foot of the mountain, not too long after. The teacher shouldered the responsibility as she was supposed to watch us, but I knew that I was at fault. I still remember his face when he mouthed for help without getting a single sound or tears in his eyes. Um. What the fuck? <laughs> what the shit? Like... That's heavy. That's not just heavy, isn't that straight up murder? Unterlassene Hilfeleistung. How do you call that in English? Like, you didn't... You didn't do your duty as a human being to help someone else. Even though you could have. Like, you could have done the bare minimum and told the teacher. Like, what the fuck? Death a step up from the store about you getting a C. Guys, is... Why, what? Is this really something you should openly share with me? This is very serious. I guess it wasn't like Blaze actively killed him and Blaze was still young, but that's still a very extreme story. I like how Amy is trying to get like excuses out here like, oh, well, he didn't actively like, yeah, no, he didn't. But he also didn't do anything to do help him. He just said, well, I just walked away and didn't even tell the teacher and he could have actually done that. What the fuck, dude? All right, then my turn again. Are you gonna tell us how you murdered a cat and then ate it? My secret is work related, so please don't tell anyone. Don't want to get fired. Oh my god, he's a zookeeper. I'm so scared. They said there's animal violence in this game. I'm <laughs> sure. I was like, I knew where he worked anyway. Though I wonder if he should be telling me secrets that could cost him his job. I oftentimes stay late at the zoo after most of the others have left. The ones working the night shift usually don't notice. That sounds rela relatively harmless so far. That was a weird sound again. I'd often skip dinner when staying at the zoo, so I'd get hungry at night. Oh god, no, I don't like where this is going. So eventually the intrusive thoughts started. That's not okay, man. I started wondering what the animals at the zoo would taste like. No, 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 no. Did she know that seals look chunky, but their meat has less than 2% fat? No, I did not know that, Mike. Thank you for sharing. Also, lots of protein. Mm-hmm, yeah, okay. There are also indigenous people who eat parrots. Okay. Also heard of people eating tigers somewhere. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, these thoughts are troubling. I see the animals at the zoo as friends and family. And thinking about eating friends and family is troubling. What 
am I supposed to do with this? That's kind of weirding me out. Wait, that's that's the point where somebody crossed the line. That's the point where it's enough, Amy. That's it. Not the whole, oh, I killed the person. No, the whole, I think about eating animals is, is the point where it weirds you out. The longer this secret sharing is going on, the more unsympathetic everyone seems. And the more uncomfortable I'm becoming. But I guess that's what happens when people start sharing the darkest secrets. Uh, it's 4 a.m. already. I should go take a shower. I'll be gone for a bit. Alright, see you later. That was fun. Secret sharing. The more I think about it, the more I wonder if what they wrote is true. I don't know. Well... Angie bullied and physically hurt someone. Blaze let someone die. And Mike is thinking about eating the animals he works with. Do you remember when I said those three people are also different? Like it's so such a cute little troop. I don't know what it's exactly said. Now we're at this point and I'm just like, I take it back. <laughs> take everything back. Those were pretty shocking stories. But would they be sharing them with an almost stranger like me? Maybe that's why they share it. Or are they playing a prank on me? You know, people feel more comfortable telling dark secrets to people they don't know. Or they love... What? You showered. Wow, what a great achievement. <clears throat> Ooh, that was nice. So, do I dare open the chat again? I mean, it is open there. I suspect things have become pretty awkward after those confessions. Seems like no one had written any new messages since I left. Hey, Amy is back. Buh -buh. Welcome back. Hello again. Huh, how could it tell I was back? Full chat doesn't have any online, away or offline indications. This is getting strange. Alright, with Amy being back, how about we continue? I'll volunteer to go next. I'd like to share the aftermath of what I experienced on the trip. I trust... The music is getting really strange too. Well, I trust you're familiar with the concept of natural selection. It's a term popularized by Charles Darwin. The term natural selection is also oftentimes used mockingly whenever someone hurts themselves while doing something unintelligent. Sometimes said unintelligent actions even result in death. The boy's death I talked about might fit that category. That got me thinking. What if instead of leaving it up to chance, you were to force said natural selection, which would make it less natural, of course, but if I were to do that, I wouldn't choose the effect randomly. What? I would use myself as the standard measure and filter out the ones who were by a big margin inferior to me. I'd very likely be a good judge of a person's capabilities and whatever they are justified in living. Okay. No. Kira, stop it. So I gave it a go and was pretty successful. Okay, stop it. Seriously, Light. I would research them, come up with a challenge and warn them of the consequences that await them if they were to fail. And I thought of pretty clever consequences, if I might add. Okay, Jigsaw. <laughs> Swimmers who didn't succeed that <laughs> succeed round with their arms and feet tied. Singers got their vocal cords ripped out. Cooks were cooked alive, despite the challenges being rather easy, in my opinion at least. Few survived. The ones who did survive rose to new heights. Do you know Buremi, that bowler who became famous for never missing a strike this year? There was also some commotion around him, missing two fingers out of nowhere. You have me to thank for that. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> he was to have one of his fingers smashed to a pop with a bowling ball for every strike he missed. He did unfortunately miss two. The first because he didn't believe my threat. The second because he was too afraid of what would happen the next time he'd miss. Quitting bowling was an option of course, he'd lose more than his fingers if he did that. Smash, smash, smash. Smash Brothers. What? Using a bowling ball was a bit inefficient, but it did get the point across. Nice. What the fuck? That's not nice. 
<laughs> a bit brutal, but if it works, it works. What are we doing? What is this? What the? What kind of twist break is? What is going on? What the fuck? <laughs> and they told me to play this with the lights off. I obviously don't have the lights off because it's already dark enough in my room. If I don't have any lights, I see nothing. But Jesus Christ. I'll go next. <laughs> Thumbs up. This has something to do with the girl who loved running I told you about. Oh my god, no. What happened? While well, putting the track, uh, the tacks into her shoes wasn't the only thing I did. Why? Why? Why are you smiling about like, like Why are you sweating a bit? Like, why, why this emoji? No. No matter what I did, she wouldn't give up running and I tried everything. Just Jesus Christ, let the woman run and not be friends with her then. I put legs. <laughs> I put legs in a foot before an important race. <laughs> I spread nasty rumors about her. Like how weird she smelled when she trained because she sweated so much. Eventually I found one permanent solution to this problem. I invited her to a secluded part of the school building where no one would bother us. And pushed her down the steps. Oh my god. It was the sound effect of the stairs. I don't know. If that can be heard. I will just do this. What the fuck? She wasn't too badly hurt. She had only twisted her ankle. Oh, only that. Ah, you should have given her an umbrella, you know. Fortunately, I had prepared a sledgehammer. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it was pretty heavy, but I managed to lift it. That's also a manva. I don't remember the name of it, though. But there was a manva about that where this kid kills with a sledgehammer. Oh, that sound effect. And shattered her legs. I brought the, the hammer down over and over. I can still hear the crunching mixed with the screams. I... Okay. I loved the look on her face when she realized that she'd never be able to run again. What the fuck? She, of course, tried to accuse me, but no one would believe her. I... I mean, there was no evidence, and I was well liked by teachers and students. So she was called a liar who was jealous of me and probably just got into an accident and tried to frame me. Oh wow, uh, that was when I got a taste for destroying other people's dreams. Well, I'm glad you're passionate about something, I guess. I felt similar ecstatic when I stabbed the eardrums of a composer and peeled off the skin of a model. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm getting nostalgic. I can relate. That's good. You know what? It's good that you have someone who can relate. True. Really relatable. That, that was beyond being a bad prank. This was sick. Alright, let me tell you a story as well. Please, Mike, don't. Please, we got this far. Please don't. At the zoo, there was a penguin. I was really close to... <laughs> oh my god. Is he gonna tell us the story about Tusk? He made a fucking uh, sea... Uh, what is it called? Sea cow? I don't know. Oh god. Mm, hung out with him regularly. Played a lot with him. Was really cute. Was probably my closest friend aside from Angie and Blaze. He also really seemed to like me back. None of the keepers were as close to him as me. Whenever I entered his pen, he'd run up to me right away. Aww. He was also always sad when I had to leave. I'd have been very sad if anything ever happened to the penguin. One night, I stayed in the penguin's pen. He had convinced me to sleep over. Okay. I was watching him sleep peacefully when the hunger came. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. I did it. I killed and ate him. Right then and there. Raw. How did that taste? I was crying, but he tasted so good. Um. Um. I moved on to a uh, Tapia. Also, one of my best friends. Please, I mean, <laughs> the others 
place and Gigi should probably look out for himself because he seems to like eating best friends, okay? Oh god, and a tiger baby. I myself had helped deliver. Oh my god, is no one wondering where they're all going? I ate them all while crying, but the sadder their death was, the better they tasted. <laughs> oh fuck. Eventually my curiosity transitioned from the animals to my cope. What? 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 How sad would I be if I ate them? How tasty would they be? I... What? Alright, this is screwed up. Very screwed up. They all have disturbing imaginations and I want no part of it. Do you really think that's imaginations? Isn't that just... Didn't they say that's like the continuation of things they really did? Also, what is up with my headphones? I keep hearing these weird sounds. Yeah, I mean, me too. I guess that's the whole point of the game. You're supposed to be like, this is you sitting there. All right, I just remembered. Amy, was this your address? We should lock the door. What the? Why do you have this? I made sure to research everyone's address to be able to find a good meeting spot for the in-person event that most people would not object to. Dude, I don't want this in my fucking house, but like, you know. How about we visit Amy now that we're friends? What the fuck? No, you don't come over. That sounds like a great idea. I'm a bit far away as I'm in America. It might take me a few minutes. What do you mean a few minutes? What is going on? <laughs> All right, I've had enough. They're seriously creeping me out. There's no reason to keep talking to them while no other classmates have joined. Maybe we can make a new group chat without those three. A message by Liv? I guess she's awake already. Hey, Amy. Hey, Liv. Have you also received a group chat invite from Blaze? They're planning a class reunion, but they're v being very weird. An invite? Can't say that I got one. Didn't Blaze say he sent out an invite to all our past classmates? They're going to murder me, aren't they? Oh my god, that's odd. But hey, this reminds me of an urban legend. Oh my god, I heard Reese. I read Reese. No, no! What is this? It's about some scary group chat message stuff. Let me send you a link. Oh god, this is not gonna go well, is it? I'm getting kind of scared. There she goes again with those urban legends and her cold stories. She really can't get enough of them. Twitter.com, rock rack games. Not exactly mood for scary stories, but I'll, uh, evil whom, uh, I'll humor live. Jesus Christ. Oh my god, it's written all in red. This is terrifying. <laughs> okay. Horrifying chat room. Don't click the invitation. Oh my god, no shit. A rumor has been making its round recently. Some of our readers have reported getting scary group chat invitations from old acquaintances, distant family, and work colleagues. Don't click on the invite link to those chat invitations under any circumstances. Witness reports speak of three different ghosts that can be encountered in said chat rooms. Oh my god, no. <gasps> no. I'm looking around my room right now. Oh my god. First, a gluttonous ghost that can't be satiated no matter how much it eats. Second, a ghost filled with regret and jealousy that thrives off of destroying other people's happiness. Third, a ghost that feels superior to everyone and wants to get rid of anyone that it seems as beneath it. These invitations usually appear at night and disappear the next day. If it doesn't disappear, then it's likely a legit invitation. If not, then you've been contacted by these ghosts. If you accept the invitation and keep chatting with them, they can enter your home. To avoid them, you need to ignore said invitation until it disappears. Again, don't click on any chat invite links that you receive at night. Fuck? What the fuck? What am I supposed to do now? But I already talked to them. Oh my god, I just had a heart attack because there was a sound in my room and it's just my dog. He's making himself a little nest on the pillow. So it's scratching around it. Oh my god, it scared me to death. Jesus Christ, dog. <laughs> just, I thought like, oh god, they got me. The ghosts are here. Someone sent a message into the group chat. What am I supposed to do now that I accepted it, though? We're, we're here. We're here. The end. Well. They don't look that scary. Oh, that's it? That's the game? Oh, that was cute. Tim Reichert, Kevin Gems, 
und äh, dann äh, Additional Assets bei Sean He, Marco Savastano, Giorgi Kala, I will not try that, I'm sorry, Case Rodriguez, Ilona Kowalkova, E-Mail Mocker bei Epic Coders, Rain Video bei Game, äh, Gum Zero One. Very great job. Game Design, Writing, Audio, Programming, Art, Kevin Jeff. Very beautiful. Oh, it's gone. 